Today, guys, we're going for a more relaxed approach to the video. I know a lot of us will have controversial opinions about this topic. Is the fragrance market dying? Is it running out of ideas? Is it uninspiring? I'm going to give you guys my opinion and I want you guys to share it with me as well. At the end of this uh, video segment in the comments down below, let's get into it, let's discuss it. Class is in session. So let's answer the question straight away. Is the fragrance industry running out of ideas? In my opinion, yes, it is. I think the industry has the same problem that now Hollywood and even the video gaming industry have in that when it was initially fresh and a wild country with uh, un unexplored uh, territory, it was very creative. You got a lot of new IPs that were legendary, created a name for the brands that made them. However, now like Hollywood, it's become too much of a gamble to try anything new. I think that's an unfortunate reality. I don't know why, but it seems like marketing is very lazy by companies. You get places like uh, brands like Chanel or Dior or anything like even Burberry, who recently have Burberry Hero, who insist on using celebrities and this just hikes up the price for frames releases. You can't have so much hype for frames only for it to flop. So fragrances are scared to try things that are new and like to follow what's already working. And that goes to our next section of what's wrong with the industry. What seems to be wrong with the industry is that it follows the trends from other fragrances instead of any new release going its own way. That's because most fragrance houses, the big fragrance houses like IFF, Fermanich, Givaudan, they have the people called evaluators, the noses. So these are the people that say, okay, this perfume has made 10 uh, fragrances, but this one here is a bit too weird. You have to go for a, a sweet vanilla based fragrance because Versace Eros is doing well, or it needs to have this sort of peppery DNA to it because that's what Dior Sauvage did. That's, what, that's what's doing well. Uh, and that's how you end up with about 20 different fragrances trying to go off the success of Sauvage or 20 different fragrances trying to copy Eros or copy Inventus. And in my opinion, I think that's just making the creation process very artificial, not really personal, and it's not making people want to express what they think will be the best. It's just, they're only trying to express what will sell. Do you guys know what I mean? And that creates a big difference in my opinion. The fragrances in today's designer markets, in my opinion, the issue is that they're not made out of passion, they're made mainly for profits. Looking at some brand examples, if you're optimistic about the idea of fragrance evaluators, you would think that, okay, it could be good that they are making uh, companies be more relatable to the consumer. They sort of act like, like the bridge between the product and the uh, fragrance house. Okay, fine. If, you're, if you want to see it that way, you can. Okay, so maybe that's how all these fragrances are going to be quite mass appealing. You don't really get anything that's uh, offensive to the nose at the very least. But let's say we look at some recent uh, fragrance releases from these big, big uh, brands like for example, let's look, about, let's look at JPG, Jean-Paul Gaultier, who used to make really creative stuff like obviously the original Le Mal. Uh, we then used to make things like Coco Rico, Fleur de Mal, really uh, weird fragrances for their time, pushing the envelope. Nowadays, what have they released recently? They released um, Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal Le Parfum, which obviously it's them resting on their laurels with the original release of Le Mal. And also they released Scandale, which is, to me, it's following this modern trend of having a sweet caramel-like fragrance that kind of is trying to copy uh, the success of Stronger With You and Versace Eros. In my opinion, it is a new IP, I guess, at least, uh, like kind of a new release, but it's not really pushing the envelope. Versace used to have great creations like The Dreamer or Versace Eau Noir, different types of scent profiles. Nowadays, the, what are they releasing? Versace Eros made loads of money, so they released Eros Flav, Eros Eau de Parfum, Eros Parfum. It's basically just Eros flankers these days from Versace. YSL saw the success of Sauvage, made Y, Y EDP, Y EDP, EDP uh, Live, Y Le Parfum, Y Eau Fresh, lots of flankers. The Lom line, about 20 different flankers. La Nuit de Lom line, about 30 different flankers. The most recent release of Blue Electric, again, it's resting on the laurels of the original La Nuit de Lom. Giorgio Armani has released Acqua di Gio Profundo, which rests on the laurels of the original Acqua di Gio. They've released Armani Code EDP, which uh, rests on the laurels of the big seller Armani Code the original. It's basically uh, it's just the same DNA. Even Dior, which used to be synonymous with extreme creativity, even within their flankers, 
For example, Dior Homme was uh, very different, like no other brand would ever think of making Iris a men's fragrance. And then even Dior Homme O, which inspired Prada Lomme by the way, was very different. Dior Homme Intense, Dior Homme Parfum, very bold pushing the envelope types of DNAs, Dior Fahrenheit. And then of course Sauvage came along and just changed their entire tactic. Sauvage Elixir was creative, but really these days uh, so <laughs> Dior are just let resting on their big names. They don't want to branch out, create a new experience. Basically, what is the problem with this? In my opinion, it makes the brands not very interesting. You are basically giving the consumer a lot of predictability. Like, oh great, uh, here we are. Creed have Aventus, which is their big seller. They made Aventus Cologne, they made Viking, Viking Cologne. I wouldn't be surprised if they made Green Irish Tweed Cologne. It makes things boring, uninspiring, and I think that's the reason why we haven't had any shockwave from a major designer release in the last uh, five years or so. Maybe Dior Sauvage was the last big change in the market. The next question is, can niche save us? Me using the previous example of Creed, I don't think so. I think that brand won't be the one that saves us. As I've said, it seems like their major releases and their original iconic bottles is just them resting on their previous laurels. They've been bought out and not even owned by the Creed family anymore. I think other niche uh, fragrances, um, other niche companies like MFK, like uh, Amouage, they are pushing the envelope. I think they are fantastic. The only issue is with niche is that it doesn't really make things accessible for the majority of us. No matter what we think in the community, I think in the community it sort of narrows our viewpoint and makes us think that most people go into niche and can afford it. But if you look on YouTube, the most popular videos are always going to be the ones with designer fragrances, which I think is absolutely fine. I, th I think it's, there's nothing wrong with spending, uh, limiting how much you spend on fragrances. And the most, the most disappointing part is that with niche brands, about 40%, probably around 40% of the price you're paying is going on packaging anyways. Um, when you know about, a bit about the industry, you realize fancy packaging hikes up the price a large amount, a lot more than you think, and uh, it's not really about the scent itself at that point. And even these big companies like Maison Francis Kurjan is owned by LVMH, or Killian, for example, is owned by Estee Lauder, which may bring down these houses a tiny bit. It might make them a little bit controlled and not as free-flowing with the crea creativity, if you're uh, pessimistic about these things. And that brings me to my next point. If we are not seeing a lot of creativity in the designer market, especially in the price tags that are accessible to the majority of us, should there be more releases or should there be less? <laughs> so basically what I'm saying is there's a lot of brands that are releasing a lot of rubbish, actually, a lot of unnecessary flankers, in my opinion. Uh, but also at the same time, you have the other issue of some brands just aren't releasing anything at all. I'm on the side of quality over quantity. Uh, I think the, play, the brands like Chanel, which has just not really released anything major in a long time, probably since Bleu de Chanel. I know they released Parfum uh, in 2018, but overall they just they seem to be focusing more on their niche, less exclusive line. So that, that I think they released Lyon, Lyon recently. Uh, maybe Chanel's just dominated the designer market, and they think, okay, let's go, go on to the niche market. But I think. They have taken it too far. I think a lot of their fragrances actually smell a little bit outdated. Still masterpieces, don't get me wrong, but fragrances like Chanel's Pour Monsieur, uh, the Anteas, which is one of my favorite fragrances of all time, or even the original Egoiste, in my opinion, smell a little bit outdated. I think Chanel can push the envelope for how much money they have, how much access they have to the industry, the best materials they can try a little bit better. I think a good balance is a brand something that, that's something like uh, Terre d'Hermes, like Hermes in general. Obviously Terre d'Hermes was their major line for a long time, but each flanker had enough difference from the last. They weren't unnecessary flankers, which was a big difference. Even houses like Guerlain, which is technically niche, but it's accessible. Each flanker of L'Homme Ideal is a, a good release. It makes sense why they release them. <laughs> They're not just pumping out stuff like, for example, Mont Blanc released, uh, had Explorer, which is fine, okay, a, a cheap clone of Aventus, but then they released Ultra Blue, which if you smell, you think to yourself, why did they release this? So I think, okay, don't pump out fragrances for no reason, and I respect the fact that Hermes approach things in a different creative way. I don't like H24 the, the most, it's not my favorite fragrance, but I still respect that release because of the fact that it is different. 
they use new interesting materials, a new scent profile. I know Jeremy's hyping it up loads. I don't think it's the best fragrance of 2021 at all, but I still respect the brand for him. In this last section of the video, we're gonna be discussing the future. What can save us from this drudgery? If you guys agree anyways about that. It seems to me like in a designer market, we're getting the McDonald's of fragrances, safe, easy, fast releases, but then niche doesn't seem too accessible. In my opinion, we need brands like Zaharoff, which I think is a fantastic brand that goes in the middle ground. It's very much accessible in its price tag, but still pushes the envelope. That's someone, George, from that brand actually, you can tell has a passion for fragrances. He doesn't need all these graphs and statistics of all these big uh, brand releases uh, having this many sales. You can tell he has the passion for, for the craft and he puts out very good releases. These are the kind of brands that I think will save the fragrance industry. I don't think we've had a major fragrance release in the market for a long time. I think probably the last major, major big one that shocked the market was Sauvage. And we had some more minor um, little aftershocks from other releases like Stronger With You or uh, even uh, maybe Baccarat Rouge. But overall, I think it will be an internet-based company that will change the future of the fragrance industry. It'll be something that's extremely high quality. It's not trying to just cash out and it will be <laughs> saving money, not having overly ridiculous packaging, not having overly ridiculous marketing from celebrities. It'll be focusing on what uh, us guys in the fragrance community like, what we love. It'll understand the, the market without trying to sell out in a way. Maybe I'm being too harsh, guys, but I want to know what you guys think. Do you agree with my sentiments? Do you like these types of videos where I just kind of rant and ramble on? It's me just being a crazy guy talking about fragrances in my room. I personally love it. I can do it all day long, but let me, let me know guys in the comments below. Make sure to check out our other videos in the meantime. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Class dismissed.